Hey there, I'm Greg Jarvis from the Flowers of Hell. It's a transatlantic space rock orchestra. And uh, when I heard about this telethon, I thought, hey, why don't I give you guys a song? Whenever I think of Canada and refugees, there's one guy I always think of who I met when I was traveling in Syria when I was a young man there in 95. And I'd just been sleeping on a rooftop in Damascus, about 50 dudes, there's all carpets and yoga matty type stuff. And, you know, it's warm and that, so you're just waking up under the sun. And one morning, one of the dudes who'd been sleeping next to me was, my friend, why don't you go to Hama? It is much nicer there. And so he told me about Hama, this ancient city with a magical old water wheel, and I headed on up there. Problem was, though, it was during Ramadan. And uh, as a young man on holiday, a young Canadian on holiday, anyhow, I liked it to have a drink. And uh, during Ramadan, you can't get a drink. And I was having lunch in this cafe and I was looking around at the taps and saw this tap of beer. I just wanted one. I asked the guy, look, can you please just pour me one? He was my friend. No, I am sorry, I can't. But you see, one of the things I love about traveling in the Arab lands is hospitality is part of the religion. And so he was, I tell you what, Come back and meet me here tonight after sundown. So I'm like, well, all right, maybe he's going to pour me a beer after sundown. So I go on back. I'm all excited. And I show on up there. And as I get there, I see, oh, the grate's all down on the place. Okay, it's closed. It's locked. I'm never going to get a beer now. But no, but no dude around. And then he rolls on up in a 1957 Chevy. You see... One of the things I loved about Syria back then was they had all these old American cars that they'd kept going, kind of like Cuba. And, um, you know, incredible old machines. And here's one. I've never ridden in a 57 Chevy, let alone a beat up old 57 Chevy that's been kept going on an Arabian night. So I hop on in the car. Now, I don't know where we're going, but uh, I just got my faith in this guy. And so we drive and we drive and we drive on out of Hama and we uh, make it on up into the desert. And we're driving through the desert where all the moonlight shining down across all the sand dunes. It looks like an ocean at night, just absolutely beautiful. He's got the Arabian music playing. Uh, really just an amazing thing right there. Never mind the whole clandestine thing though. We're on our way to get a drink during Ramadan. So we emerge out of the desert into there's a little village and he parks down below this house that's up on a hill. He's my friend, I leave you here. I go to get the liquor. And so he goes on up the house. I'm just there stuck in the street in a village in the middle of the desert, not knowing what the hell I say if a cop comes along. What am I doing there? I don't even know where I am. I don't even know the guy's name or I can't really remember it. But sure enough, he comes on back down, and he's got a bottle in one hand and a glass in the other, and he pours me a glass of this moonshine. And he starts telling me all about the moonshine. It's called Arak. And Arak is the Syrian drink. And while other cultures have a similar thing, like Raki in Turkey or Ouzo in Greece or Pastis in France, Arak, I gotta say, is the best of them all. And he talks about its aphrodisiac properties and its many other things. And we just really bonded drinking this Arak, and we didn't get that drunk or anything on it. It was more the principle of, we're going to have a drink. And he was giving me that hospitality. And then he returned the bottle on up to the house, and we got back in the car, and we just drove on back to Hama, just enjoying that ride through the desert with a little bit of a buzz on, rolling down that empty highway with the Arabian tunes cranked on up. And then the next time I heard of Hama at all was about 20 years later, a little longer than that, and uh, it was seeing drone footage of the place just leveled and destroyed. And uh, I hope to God that guy got out, because he was a good one, and uh, I really feel for him. So, in uh, the spirit of welcome refugees to this country, and I hope he's one of the people who managed to make it here, uh, I wrote a little song about him for this... Uh, 24-hour refugee telethon. And uh, here we go. 
get that camera going there. Oh yeah, COVID tune for you. So I called it Air Act 95 after the liquor and the year, and I thought it sounded kind of like Pastis 51, the French drink. So. Chevy on a Syrian desert highway We're headed out of Hammer after hunting for some liquor all day And the moonbeams are shining and the sand dunes look like waves I don't know where we're going, but my new friend knows the way. There's a house on the hill, and the village sits still below. He leaves me by the car as he goes on up there alone. Just trust in my fellow man. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He comes back down with a glass and a bottle in hand He pours me a measure and it burns me on command He tells me about Arak, this local drink of his land I've heard Uzo and Perno, but I'm a Arak man. We talk about girls as we lean against the car. A desert breeze blows as we gaze on up at the stars. How simple life can be when there's peace and you are free. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now we're back in the Chevy, tearing down the empty highway. The moonbeams are shining and the music's pumping all the way. We left the moon shine behind, cause there's some rules you gotta hold. And then war came to town. And since war came to town, it's for my rebel friend that I pray. 
Yeah, since war came to town, it's for my rebel friend I pray. Since war came to town, it's for my rebel friend that I I right, thank you and give large. Have a good day, evening, whatever time you see this.